Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today. People were asking me, how are the canals? Did they survive the hurricane? Yes, they did. The tide's really high today, too. So I'm out here. But uh, it is time, guys, to hunker down. You know, warning after warning after warning. So we're going to talk about that today. i got a bunch of news for you. But before I get into it, please like the video as usual, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notification. Don't forget we have an email coming out this week, so um, make sure you're on the list. Sign up for the email list. It'll be the first link below. But let's get right into it. Piper Sandler is an economic forum, and they make predictions. Nancy Lazar, who is one of the leading economists for them, steps forward and says, hey, people need to understand that this economy is going to a very dark point right now. And the best thing that you can do is you can go out and you can get yourself ready and start saving money. Now, one thing that we've talked about extensively is how you need to not borrow money for everything that you get. Now, you know, it's very difficult when you go out and you buy a car, you buy, you know, a motorcycle, you buy a house, you know, not everybody has cash just to go out and go do that. So people have to finance things like that. Uh, I, for one, think it's a bad idea when you finance vacations and things like that. I'm not a timeshare guy. I'm totally against it for a thousand reasons. And, uh, you know, the people that pick up the timeshares on the resale market for pennies on the dollar, if you look at like Craigslist, you can see timeshares sometimes that are sold for, you know, a dollar come get my timeshare. So there's always deals out there. But when it comes to financing, Nancy's saying that people need to not, you know, live in their savings. People need to cut back in every way, shape, and, you know, and form right now because this is only going to get worse right now. Now, with that advice, what do you do with that? Do you take that seriously? Do you think that things are bad? Think about this. Wolf Street had a great article talking about credit card debt. We just hit $1.03 trillion in credit card debt. That is unbelievable, guys. That is so much, and it's devastating. Now, I've talked to so many people lately, and, you know, have a nice tea, have a drink, whatever, and they start talking about money, and uh, we, you know, get to credit card debt. And I've had a lot of people tell me over the course of the last couple months that, Dan, it's unavoidable. We have to use the credit cards to get by. The way my husband gets paid, you know, he gets paid this way, this way, and then gets a bonus check every other month. And we can't survive without the bonus check. So the only thing that we can do is hit the credit cards. Okay. This house is an escrow. Isn't that nice? It's beautiful right in the water. So what they do is they use the credit cards to, um, you know, have their lifestyle, pay for things, make the house payment and things like that. Now, the question is, have you ever had it where you get the bonus check and you don't pay the credit cards often? Oh, all the time. It happens all the time. The credit card debt is growing because inevitably something goes wrong. So you can't afford your lifestyle. No, it's not that we can't afford it. Yeah, you can't afford your lifestyle because you have to borrow money to exist. And even with that bonus check, well, sometimes the bonus check is bigger than others. And sometimes we can pay more towards a credit card debt. No, guys, it doesn't work that way. Now, think about this. You know, I am not against credit cards. I'm against, I'm against people that have so much debt that they can't live and that they're squeaking by and uh, won't admit that they're debt hounds. Now, the Wall Street article is great because it says 28% of the people out there that have credit card debt are carrying the majority of the balances right now. That's wild, guys. 28%. So are you one of those people carrying all this debt? Do you have too much credit card debt right now? You know, if you don't, oh, no, we don't, then you're, you're doing better than the average person. That's the other thing is people sit there and I like to share stuff like that. And have people say, you know, I'm saving money. You know, would it be great if you could just save all your money? Now, 
I have people that write me that live on nothing. I have people that are, I don't want to say they're destitute, but they just live on, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollars a year, and you know they have a nice house, they've got motor homes, they've got things like that, but they spend no money. Now I think people like that don't have joy personally. I think that you've got to have time away. You've got to be able to go out to dinner when you want, not have a three hundred dollar dinner, but just be able to go out and and enjoy your life. A lot of people don't live that way right now, so. There's got to be a happy medium for everybody. But when you hear that all these people have all this credit card debt right now and they're upside down, you know, you don't want to be on that list. So let me know, share your thoughts on this stuff. Don't get yourself into debt. Stay out of it. Don't buy frivolous right now. I'm telling you, now more than ever, you're going to see everything go on sale right now. Think about this. Every time I walk here, Lately, there's been more houses for sale here, more houses for lease. Why is that? Okay, it's interesting, don't you think? Well, the tide is really high today. This is one of the worst real estate economies in decades. I could literally every day I could open this up, but today's interest rates are well. Guess what? They're up again. Mortgage interest rates are up again. The highest level, not in 22 years, but in 23 years since 2000. The highest mortgage rates since 2000. 7.43 percent. That is nuts, guys. That is so high. And uh, again, the people that write me and tell me that they had 10 percent mortgages and uh, the house was $43,000. I love you guys. That house is. 430,000. Do the payment. Do the math on that. It's completely different now. So there's that. 10 year bonds have been spiking. Interest rates are spiking right now. We are seeing things go at a higher level than ever. And uh, wow, there's somebody got a little flooding. Looks like they left the hose on. But uh, wanted you guys to see this after the hurricane. It's beautiful out here. You know, nice big tropical storm. And uh, yeah, this is definitely water that was left on. So I traipsed through it. So, you know, a couple things I get a kick out of. The state of Utah is sick of EV cars, tired of it. Tired of the brakes, tired of everything they get. So, what are they going to do? They may be the first state to implement. Only for electric vehicles, uh, a per mile tax. Good luck, guys. Good luck. My car is free to use, Dan. I have solar on my house and it doesn't cost me a dime. Okay. Do you guys like the Kevin Bacon commercial where he's out talking about his EV car and, hey, you know, in 40 minutes I can get an 80% charge? Okay, 80%, guys. It's ridiculous. I can gas up inside of six minutes and, and waste time and go get a soda during that time and spend less. You guys are spending more. Now they're going to tax you per mile. How do you guys feel about that? Do you think that's fair? Now, from a guy who drives more than you do on an average, it's not fair that I would pay a per mile tax here in California. I think it's ridiculous right now. So what we're seeing is all the politicians, especially San Diego County, they want to implement a per mile tax. And people are up, you know, just outrageous. It's your outrage because think about it. We pay the highest gas tax. We pay huge registration fees for our cars. And now they want to tax us per mile. It's not fair. It's not fair. And you can sit there and say, well, Dan, if you drive more, you should pay more. I do pay more because I buy more gas than you do. I buy more gas. I put more miles on my cars and uh, cars wear out faster, la, 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 la. And uh, I get to pay more in taxes than you do. That's my increase. Well, the problem with the state of Utah is these people are renewing their registration and they're not getting the tax dollars that they got before. Well, how can we do it? And that's the thing. If you think that everything, oh, this is going to be the way around this, <laughs> it never is. There's always somebody trying to think about that. So they've thought about the way around this thing. And uh, the way around it is to tax you per mile in Utah. So, that's beautiful. It's always fun to come out here. 
all this construction out here right on the water. This is a very inexpensive place. When you talk about living on the water, this is more reasonable than other locations are, to say the least. So you see a lot of construction out here. Man, I've seen, what have we seen? What's that, the seventh home under construction? You got these two over here. It's kind of neat, guys, but uh, just beautiful. So wanted to see this. The hurricane damage was minimal. Wind, you know, my corn plants, my crop, I didn't lose it all. Could stand up the corn, it was all blown over. And uh, we tied it back up. But uh, share your thoughts on this stuff, guys. So remember, jumping off the bridge is illegal, so don't do it. Okay, you first. I love labor stories. I love hearing about what workers want when they come in and uh, sign up for a new job. It's a great article below of talking about how people are demanding $80,000 a year as a base salary. And uh, again, what are you worth? What do you do? One of the greatest things that I learned when I worked for an Elon Musk company was Everything with the company was performance-based. Everything. The lady that answered the phone, to the installers, and everybody in between. The accounting department, everybody had a performance tied to their paycheck that made it that if you did more, you got more. And I thought, this is just brilliant. It's absolutely the smartest thing ever because, listen, um, we don't want people left on hold, Stacey. We want them to be sent through, and we don't want any, any nonsense with complaints or anything like that, that when they get, they call in, they get rerouted right away. And you can sit there and say, that's no big deal, but uh, it is. Wow, look at this, this guy, this was always open. And uh, they fenced this off in the last couple of weeks since we were here, look at that. No, 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 this is my backyard. Isn't that crazy? So. It'll be interesting to see. Look at this. You guys, we've sat out here before. And now this person that's doing this construction, no, 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 that's, I checked, it's my, my backyard. Well, we're gonna see, <laughs> you're gonna see soon enough. So, 80,000 a year. Now, here's the thing. Here in California, $80,000 a year, in certain areas you couldn't rent an apartment making 80 grand a year. So, it's just very, very unique. The one thing about the hurricane with this high tide, you can just see how it's just brought everything out. The boats are fine. I didn't see any damage. Nothing that was out here. But again, we are hearing stories about quiet quitting, people that are miserable. I can't stand hearing stories about, oh, I just phoned it in and I hate working here and it's terrible working here. Then don't work there. Go get another job. Go get another job. Most people don't work where they're at. Usually it's not the company, it's, it's lack of respect. Maybe one coworker, the people that they work with that they're miserable with. There's so many stories and studies about this, but people today are quiet quitting. They are just done. And uh, the problem that we saw with 2020, 2020, 21, even 2022, we saw so many people quit. I'm sick of working for these people. I'm just gonna retire. And I've met so many people that thought they had enough money to retire and they don't. There's been studies lately about having $5 million for retirement, which I know a lot of us are sitting there going, five million bucks, that's a lot. And it's not enough money for these people to live on. To, you know, how long are you gonna live? Seriously, what kind of lifestyle do you have? What do you do? And again, are you the guy that lives on $12,000 a year? So you can do anything, you could live anywhere, you know? So, let me know what you think about this so far. I just think it's very, very interesting that we're seeing so many people uh, that are unhappy, so many people that are demanding more. And again, we, you know, you shouldn't work anywhere that you don't feel appreciated. I, that's what I think. And, and again, it's a job. It's not social hour. I understand that. But, you know, when you talk to people, you talk to professionals like Dr. Marvin, and he talked about how depressed people were in you know, being alone, 
a lot of people need an outlet. A lot of people need to go out. But then there's the introverts that if they never spoke to another human being, they'd be fine with that. You know, so, you know, you know who you are. And you also know how you're handling your finances right now because we get these warnings, these little mini warnings. Okay, the hurricane was another mini warning as far as I'm concerned. And I had so many people write me and say, wow, I shouldn't, I should have been prepared, Dan. I should have been prepared. Even in August, things can happen any time of the year, guys. You know, everybody was more freaked out about the earthquakes that we had. And again, was it attributed to the storm? Who knows? Who knows? You know, was it the hot weather mixed with the water? Everything got shook up. The biggest earthquake I heard about was 5.1. It was far enough away that it didn't affect anybody. So we got lucky there. But, you know, you have to be ready. And you know, as, you know, get yourself in order. Get your own business in order. If you live by yourself, you know, know your debts. Know how much money you need to make. How much money you, if I make $15 a month, I can pay my bills. You need to know what that number is. And you need to know how you're going to save and what's going to happen. Because what happened with, you know, Hillary is that people went, and, oh, God, we got to have water. And they just cleaned everything out. And it made it look ridiculous because it wasn't as bad. Now, there were some areas that got serious rain and serious damage and things like that. I'm not minimizing any of that. What I'm telling you is that there's people that were not prepared for that. If you don't have water, three or four cases of work on the oldest first, that's on you guys. Because what would happen if you got locked in your house for three or four days? Your apartment, you couldn't leave. Okay. You know, I talk about these banks, the smaller banks, the people that cannot pay their bills, people that have to, um, you know, use alternative methods. It's happening more and more and more. I have seen more and more and more homeless people right now, older people, people my age and older, carrying suitcases around, rolling them around because they've been evicted or they've been kicked out and life has not, you know, treated them the way that they thought they were going to be treated at their age. It happens, guys. You know, there is horrible stories out of Tennessee. This woman said that she paid her house off and uh, didn't pay $3,000 in property taxes because she was broke. And they sold her house for $3,000, her $300,000 house for $3,000. And now they're saying, this is equity theft. You can't have that. No, guys, you really don't own your house 100% if you don't pay your taxes. And the fact that her property taxes were only three grand. Now, here in California, the thing about California that's wacky, I knew a guy that didn't pay his property taxes for three and a half years. Boom, boom, boom. Ratching up beautiful house in uh, a place called San Juan Capistrano where the mission's at. Beautiful. The house is worth millions today. And he, during a real estate downturn, couldn't work, couldn't sell houses, had to give houses, his investment properties, back to the bank in the 80s and ended up selling a house to a guy that gave him cash to pay the taxes. And he got to keep the house. And I'm like, wow, that's an amazing, I never knew that story. And he shared that with me. I'm not going to give you his name, but kind of a wild story that it got pushed. He goes, literally, they were going to have a tax sale. And uh, I was very close to that happening if I wouldn't have paid the taxes. Who knows? Who knew, guys? So I wanted to walk out to this point because it's really nice. So, just very calm today. Took a different direction for you guys to see this. Isn't that nice? Feels beautiful. But again, for those of you that have seen this before, very high tide, nice walkways. You need to have a plan for everything. Okay? Your health plan. You know, hanging out with my buddies last week. You know, as we get older, and as I talk to my friend Dave, he has a, a men's group that gets together once a year. They have a big get together and they go travel different places. And uh, he's, he's about eight years older than I, he's mid 60s. And, uh, you know, Dan, as we get older, everybody's more concerned about their health and more concerned about, you know, getting by and making sure they're economically ready for this. Well, that's where you need to be, guys. That's where we all need to be that. now. Rich, no bills, 300 grand in the bank. No, not talking that. What I'm talking about, guys, is being able to put your head on a pillow. It's okay to have bills. We all have bills. And, uh, 
you know, you just need to not have it be something that's taking over your life and encompassing everything. You have to have that. And have you seen, you know, you, we've all seen those commercials. Hey, buy, uh, uh, buy these houses, buy these tax liens. Fascinating stuff, guys. But you're starting to get more and more uh, press on this. And again, people are like, well, the, I own the house free and clear. You don't own it free and clear, guys. If you don't pay your taxes, you don't own your house. Remember that. And, uh, you know, there's hardship. There's things that you can do. My late girlfriend with her cancer did a lot of different things at times because of her health situation. All you have to do is ask, and you'd be surprised the stuff they will give you. A lot of people don't do that. Oh, I'm, no, I'm never going to do that. What, am I going to get a handout? No, it's not a handout. It's I need a break. Hey, can I get, you know, I know I owe this on this day. Can I get 60 days? No, we can't do that. We can do 45. Oh, okay. Wow, I thought I was going to get 10, Dan. I thought I was going to get a week. So, you know what I mean? Share your thoughts on this stuff so far, guys. I'm gonna finish this video with these last few stories. And uh, remember Yellow Trucking Company and how they filed bankruptcy about two weeks ago? Remember that? Well, they have hubs that are in huge demand right now because they service large areas. And this company, Yellow Trucking, was known for, for partial loads. So they would take you know, five units of this, six boxes of that, and they would ship things and throw it all together on one truck. You do that all the time. The thing that's fascinating is they have these hubs that are for sale right now, and they're getting bid like two and three times what they thought they'd be worth. Think about this. Company bid $1.2 billion for a hub to take over. Stories below. It wasn't enough. Somebody outbid them and offered $1.3 billion. Wow, okay, that is substantial. So $1.3 billion to have one of these people's hubs, pretty good if you're getting it through bankruptcy and you're paying this off, but that goes to the creditors, which is good news. Now, food-related stories, couple of them to end this video. Um, Subway, Subway's a joke. Subway it used to be a decent place to eat. I have not stepped in a Subway for years, ever since I did a story on their fake tuna that uh, people did a test on it and Subway uh, really didn't follow up with any proof because I thought, okay, they're going to sue these women, you know, till their brains pop out. And you know what? They didn't. No, that's not true. I, they're, they're lying. Well, they said that the tuna didn't have any uh, tuna DNA. What does that mean? Any discernible tuna DNA? Huh? It's a concoction of other meats. Okay. How about you vegans out there or pescatarians that don't want to eat meat and they said that there was beef in their tuna? Isn't that crazy? Okay. Anyways. Subway has been trying to find a suitor to sell the place to for about eight months now. It looks like Arby's is going to buy it for $9.3 billion, which again, you know, I ate at Arby's last week. Okay, got the coupon and went down there, ate at Arby's. But when was the last time you ate at Arby's? I think Arby's is like, you know, your local nail salon that's a front for cash. That's what I think. That's what I think. Why, is it, why are there 40 nail salons in your city? Ask that question. Why are there 40 mattress stores in your city? Ask, answer, you know, answer that one, okay? I think they're a front for things. That's just me, okay? Every day cash goes in, but nobody comes in the store. Anyways, final, final story. Um, there is uh, uh, Emmett Smith, the former Dallas Cowboy star. He wanted to have a restaurant called Emmett's. And Emmett's was going to be big time. It was going to be in Vegas. They were going to have the first location and they were going to go national. They just announced that they are never going to form and that they lost, think about this, of investors' money, $67 million. The main chef that they brought in. Now, if you've ever been to Vegas and you go to a hotel and they say, wow, this is a Bobby Flay restaurant. This is a Gordon Ramsay restaurant. Well, he lends his name to these places dictates the menu, has his hand in it, and has ownership in it. It's great. It's the greatest deal in the world for these chefs. Chef Rainier, this guy, he's suing for $67 million because he's like, wait a second. All this investor money's been gone. I'm losing money. Uh, I had, you know, my fortune set, but guys, this has been dragging on for years that they were going to have these restaurants with Emmett Smith. 
and Emmett's was going to be the name of it. And Emmett's has just been a cash front. So needless to say, there's going to be lawsuits. And needless to say, we're going to hear more and more of this too. So fascinating stuff. And I'm going to end it with this one, which is kind of a bonus. And I don't have the guy's name. I can look it up for you. But uh, in Newport Beach, uh, over the weekend, there was a football player from the uh, New Orleans Saints who was wandering high as a kite, walking through the streets of Newport Beach, and they pulled him over, and he was having some type of episode. I'm sure it was Molly or some type of episode like that. But anyways, this guy was having an episode. They took him in and, and arrested him, and then took him to the hospital because he was having some type of episode. But he was cleared to play. So that's our athletes for you. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Onward and upward. I will see you guys very soon. But uh, a lot of people asked about the channel. The channel survived. And uh, again, join the email list because we've got an email coming out this week. Let me know what else you guys want to see. And if you want to reach out to me, it's hello at iallegedly.com. I appreciate all the news stories. The more information you give us, the better. We have a huge announcement coming in the next week. Okay? So it's going to be super cool. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. Onward and upward, guys. I'll see you very soon.